how do you deal with a literal six day creation versus a is it evolution? Yeah, so, so six day creation versus a long, longer creation, six 24 hour days. You know, this is probably the biggest question that I get when I speak at universities. You get Christians coming from Christian backgrounds and they say, okay, well, the, the earth is 6,000 years old. Okay, why do you say it's 6,000 years old? Well, you count back the years of people's lives in the Bible and it comes to, I don't know, 6,300 or something like that. And what happens is, okay, so, so that's, that's where they got that. But there are different ways of, of looking at this. So for example, in Genesis chapter one, for in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And, and, and so you, you have these first two verses are different than the third and then verse three. So there seems to be this gap there. And it's, the earth was then formless and void. There's this gap. Even the tenses between the first two verses and the third verse. So you could say, all right, there is a gap between the origin of, of, uh, uh, of the earth and then this six day creation. Now, Christians will dig in their heels and say, no, everything goes back to these six days. Actually, if you look at it, you don't have to discuss this way. In fact, how many people believe here believe that the earth does not move at all? It does not rotate, it is fixed. All right, so we have no fixed earthers here, all right? 700 years ago, 500 years ago, Christians would have been fixed earthers because the Bible says the earth is set upon its pillars and it does not move. Well, could you read that in a different way? Yeah, you could read that God has established certain quantities, certain laws of, 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 uh, of physics which hold here. It could be read that way, or you could read it that the earth absolutely does not move. But we have no fixed earthers here. So what happens is the scriptures were read in one way, and then this guy Galileo comes along, and he says, hey, we're, we're actually moving. We're actually moving around the sun. And, 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 uh, uh, and people said, you're crazy, Galileo. And now, after a few hundred years, every, everybody is a moving earther. We have no more fixed earthers. So, so there are other ways to look at this. Now, if, if, I just, if I just take out my Bible and I go to Genesis chapter 1. So we just, we'll just go to Genesis chapter 1. And we'll read in Genesis chapter 1. It says, it says, we're going to look at, at the word day in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. People say a day is a day, 24 hours, period. Day is it. Okay. All right. Let's go with that. All right. So, so we've got Genesis chapter 1, verse 4. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning one day. All right, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. What does day mean in that context? In that context, the day is daytime, 12 hours. He called the light day and the darkness. So in that verse, that's 12 hours roughly, all right? Then you go down to verse 8. God called the expanse of heaven... God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening and there was morning a second day. So how long is that day? Well, it was evening, there, there was evening and there was morning. So that's a 24-hour day maybe, right? So we have a 12-hour day. We have what looks like a 24-hour day. But now if we, go, if we go now to chapter 2 of Genesis, verse 4. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord made earth and heaven. How long is that day? In the day that the Lord made earth and heaven. So did God create the heavens and the earth in one day? In the day? Or is he speaking of a body of time? Like I say, back in the day, we used to you know, walk to school uphill both ways. You know? it, Back in the day, you know, it says in the day that the Lord made the heaven, the earth and the heaven. So he's speaking of a body of time. So you have three uses of the word day, the same word in Hebrew used in three different contexts, just between Genesis chapter one and Genesis chapter two, verse four. 
So you're telling me that you know for sure the day is 24 hours. Well, which day? Clearly, one of the days is a part of the day, a part of a day. One of the days may be 24 hours. The, another one is speaking of the day, the same word in Hebrew. Is speak, so this is not as easy as we might think to figure this thing out. The other thing is this. There, there's, a, there's a guy named uh, Gerald Schroeder. He's a, he's a Jew. He's an Orthodox Jew. He's a physicist. He lives in Jerusalem. I have met him. He has a he, he's written uh, on this, and so what he looks at is we know our universe is expanding. So in other words, it came from a boom, blew out in the Big Bang, it's expanding. And this is why today is going to be a little bit longer than yesterday was. A little bit. Days keep expanding because we have an expanding universe. We blew out from some central point, and this is how we know we have an expanding universe. The universe is expanding. Yeah, sure, we're, we're, we're revolving around the sun and we revolve around our axis, but the universe is expanding, so things are getting further and further apart with time. And, and uh, um, because it's expanding, time changes based on where we are in the expansion of the universe. This is what Einstein taught us. So time changes based on where we are with, we're, uh, on the expansion of the universe. So if you look back at the early parts of creation, shortly after this big bang, has occurred, a day will be different than a day in our time. We will look back on that. We will look back on that, and that will look like a long period, whereas when you were living there, it was a very short period. Because perception of time is different to where we are in the expansion of the universe. So what Gerald Schroeder does, and you could just Google Gerald Schroeder, doesn't matter how you spell it, it'll come up. If you do Gerald Schroeder, Age of the Universe, Gerald Schroeder, Age of the Universe, you get like a five-page document where he summarizes. Now he has a whole book on it. And I have given this to statisticians and, and uh, Christian statisticians. The guy was a, a professor at, at, at MD Anderson, and he loved it. He says, he says all the math is, it, what do you expect? Gerald Schroeder is a physicist. I mean, the math's going to be right. And uh, uh, so that's another way to look at this. So this is, this is what I make of this. Christians in, in the evangelical community today might have a young earth creation view, and that's one way you can read it. But you don't have to read it that way. Just like you don't have to read that the earth is fixed upon its pillars and it does not move. You don't have to read that in the way that the earth does not move at all, is fixed. You can read it differently. And that's what I would say. Thank you for joining me today. If you could give us a like, share, or podcast review, we would appreciate it. If you have any questions, you could send them to ask at jesusandscience.org, and we'll try to answer some of those questions in an upcoming video. And if you do not believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you want to hear about why I believe, send me an email to tour at drjamestour.org, and we'll get together by Zoom and I'll share with you why I embrace the resurrection of Jesus Christ.